Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. This is episode number seven of the Coastal Landscapes and Change series over here on my channel. If you haven't seen the rest of them, I'll link the playlist up here or somewhere on my channel. I'm sure you'll be able to find it. We're going through the whole specification of the geography A-level and today we're going to be looking at sea level change. So if this is your first time, please do subscribe down below. I upload these every Monday at 4.30pm. And yeah, it's exactly what I needed during my levels and so this is why I'm doing it for you guys. So without further ado, no more ramblings, let's get straight on into this. Contemporary sea level change. What's happening in Kiribati? In 2014, President Anout Tong of Kiribati finalised the purchase of 20 kilometres squared of land in one of the Fijian islands. 2,000 kilometres from Kiribati. The inhabitants of Kiribati, a group of islands in the central Pacific Ocean, now own a refuge somewhere else. The nation of Kiribati consists of 33 widely spaced areas, which stretch across an area of the Pacific Ocean, nearly as wide as the USA. Kiribati's islands are very low-lying and mangrove atolls, only one metre or less above sea level in most places. To visitors, Kiribati can seem like paradise, but it's been predicted that many of its islands could disappear under the sea within the next 50 years. In places, the sea level is rising by 1.2 centimetres per year, which is four times faster than the global average. Why are the sea levels rising? Global warming. Average global temperatures rose by 0.85 degrees centigrade from 1880 to 2012. During a similar period, 1870 to 2010, Average sea levels rose by 21 centimetres. Sea levels are rising because of the melting polar ice sheets as well as glaciers worldwide and because of thermal expansion. This is when the seawater expands as it warms. No one knows exactly how far the sea levels will rise. Climate scientists estimate that by 2100, average sea level rise will have risen somewhere between 30 centimetres and one metre with perhaps the best guess at 40 centimetres. And that means that low-lying nations like Kiribati are at risk from disappearing under the waves. What's next for Kiribati? The land purchased by, in Fiji by Kiribati will be used for the immediate future of agriculture and fish farming projects to guarantee the nation's food security. Rising sea levels in Kiribati are contaminating its, its groundwater sources and affecting its ability to grow crops. In the future, if necessary, people could move from Kiribati to Fiji. The government has, has launched a migration with dignity policy to allow people to apply for jobs in neighbourhood in neighbouring countries, such as New Zealand. If the islands are submerged, Kiribati's population will become environmental refugees, people forced to migrate as a result of changes to the environment. Longer term sea level change. Sea level varies over time. It is measured relative to land, so the relative sea level can change if the land or sea falls or rises. The two types of sea level change are called eustostatic change, which is when the sea level itself rises or falls, and isostatic change, when the land rises or falls relative to the sea. Eustostatic change is global. In cold, glacial periods, Precipitation falls as snow rather than rain and forms huge ice sheets that store water normally held in the oceans. As a result, sea levels fall. At the end of glacial periods, as temperatures rise, the ice sheets begin to melt and retreat. Their stored water then flows into rivers and the sea again, and sea levels rise. Isostatic changes occur locally. During glacial periods, the enormous weight of ice sheets, which can be several kilometres thick, makes the land sink. This is called isostatic subsidence. As the ice begins to melt at the end of a glacial period, the reduced weight of the ice causes the land to readjust and rise. This is called isostatic recovery. Eustatic changes occur relatively quickly, but isostatic changes take much longer. At the end of the last glacial period in Europe, about 8,000 years ago, glacial meltwater caused a relatively rapid rise in sea level, 
which led to the formation of the English Channel and the North Sea, turning Britain into an island. Despite the melting of a huge amount of ice, the land only started to rise very slowly and is still rising now. In the UK, two different types of isostatic change have occurred since the last ice age. Land in the north and the west, which was covered by ice sheets during the last ice age, is still rising as a result of isostatic recovery. However, land in the south and east, which the ice sheets never covered, is sinking. Rivers pour weight and sediment into the Thames estuary. The weight of this sediment causes the crust to sink there and relative sea levels to rise. Therefore, southeast England faces increased flood risks as a result of the land sinking due to isostatic change, as well as sea levels rising caused by global warming. Sea level change due to tectonic activity. On Boxing Day 2004, an earthquake measuring between 9.0 and 9.3 on the Richter scale caused a tsunami in the Indian Ocean that killed approximately 300,000 people. The Indian island of, of Sumatra was the worst hit because it was closest it was the closest land to the earthquake's epicentre. At the centre, a Banda Eke, I think, was hit by 15 metre high waves and flooded, just 15 minutes after the initial earthquake. But this devastation was made even worse because the earthquake caused the Earth's crust at, at Banda Eke to sink, permanently flooding some parts of the city. The 2004 earthquake was caused by an estimated 1,600 kilometre of fault line, slipping about 15 metres along the subduction zone, where the Indian plates slide under the Burma plate. The seabed rose several metres, displacing, displacing an estimated 30 kilometres cubed of water and triggering a tsunami. Not only that, but the raising of the seabed reduced its capacity of the entire Indian Ocean, producing a permanent sea level rise of an estimated 0.1 millimetres. Past tectonic activity. Past tectonic activity has had direct impacts on some coasts across the world, as well as sea level rises, due to the uplift of mountain ranges and coastal land at destructive and collision plate margins, and the local tilting of land. For example, some ancient Mediterranean ports have been submerged and others have been stranded at the current sea level. Landforms caused by changing sea level. Changes in sea level affect the shape of the coastline and the formation of new landforms. A fall in sea level exposes land previously covered by the sea, creating an emergent coastline. Whilst a rise in sea level floods the coast and creates a submergent coastline. Emergent coastlines. Emergent coastline landforms. As the land rose as a result of isostatic recovery, former shoreline platforms and their beaches were raised above the present sea level. Raised beaches are common on the west coast of Scotland, where often remains of eroded cliff lines, called relic cliffs, can be found behind the raised beaches, with wave cut notches and caves as evidence as past marine erosion. On the Isle of Arran, three distinct raised beaches represent changes in sea level. Submergent coastline landforms. Riots. Shelters, winding inlets and irregular shorelines are one of the most distinctive features associated with a rise in sea level. They form when valleys in a dissected upland are flooded. Riots are common in southwest England, where sea levels rose after the past ice age, drowning the lower parts of many rivers and their tributaries to form riots. The Kingsbridge Estuary in Devon is one of these. It provides a natural harbour with the deepest water at its mouth. Dalmatian coasts are similar to riots. In this case, rivers flow almost parallel to the coast, rather than at right angles to it. The, the Dalmatian coast in Croatia gives this feature its name. Fjords. Fjords are formed when deep glacial troughs are flooded due to a rise in sea level. They are long, steep-sided with U-shaped cross-section and hanging valleys. Unlike rias, fjords are much deeper inland than they are at the coast. The shallower entrance marks where the glacier left the valley. Fjords can be found in Norway, New Zealand and Chile. 
and that is the end of the seventh episode i hope you learned something i hope you took something away this was a bit more of a confusing topic with the isostatic and eustatic change of sea level rises and things like that but i hope you kind of could follow along fairly easily please do subscribe down below i upload these every monday at 4 30 share it with a friend share it with someone who you think might find this useful and yeah i will see you same time same place next week we're going to be looking at the Holderness Coast and coastal erosion. So I will see you then. Bye guys.